Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. Hello, so I am Jay Freeman, but everyone online calls me Sork. Uh, I actually use some of my Twitter followers today to crowdsource these slides, so please bear with me. Uh, people ask me, um, well, what do I do? So I do iPhone software development. So a lot of these slides today and a lot of my talk is going to be about the iPhone. Um, now, however, the things that I'm talking about are applicable to all kinds of different systems, from desktop computers to web browsers. It's just that on the iPhone, we've had the like, fruits of these labors really play through in the um, you know, alternative marketplaces that we've had. So people say, how do I get your stuff? Is it in the App Store? And the answer is no. The App Store is boring. The App Store has apps. An app is an icon, you open it, you, you interact with it, you close it, it's gone. Um, especially on the iPhone, I mean, you, you didn't have multitasking until now, and even with multitasking, it's not really multitasking. And you're, in essence, you're trapped inside this box that is the icon. You're just unable to escape that trap that is the app. You, can't, you, can, you, can, you can affect what people can do while they're mobile, but you can't affect how people experience mobility. You can't affect the phone while it's off in their pocket or change other people's apps. So for this purpose, we have Cydia. So Cydia is an application that I wrote. It's an S3U Techies. It's an, uh, just an app package manager, really. But it is an alternative to the App Store. And that's very important wording. It is an alternative to the App Store. It is not an alternative App Store, um, which is what a lot of people try to approximate us as. Um, because, uh, you know, oh, that makes sense. I mean, you're, you're the porn store, right? That's what Steve Jobs tells me. <laughs> um, no, we're not about apps that are rejected from the App Store. We are about things that aren't apps at all. Um, in fact, I'm always asked how many apps are in my store. I think the answer is four. We've got Sideporter, uh, MMS, we've got uh, GV Mobile, and uh, Groove Shark. Uh, a couple games no one plays. We've got a torrent client. It's a torrent remote that I don't even know. I've never tried it. Um, really, we're about a software application aftermarket. We're about unauthorized third-party modifications to the software that you already know, love, and use from whether it's Apple or whether you yourself wrote it, you don't realize that people are making changes to it. And when I say aftermarket, I don't mean the used software market or the pirate store, which is another thing I get. I mean modifications to programs um, like the automotive aftermarket done using technology called mobile substrate. So mobile substrate is something I designed that lets you inject code into running processes, make modifications at the Objective-C or the C level. We handle all of the complicated corner cases. We make it reasonably safe. Uh, newer technology I've been working on and, and many people are now using is called Script. This allows you to inject a JavaScript um, kind of debugging environment into any process, tap complete your way through the object hierarchy, gives you complete control over, over Objective-C, C programs, and soon Java programs. Now, all of my stuff's open source, but none of the programs we're modifying are. And people ask, how are we figuring out how to change them? How do we change them? Well, open source, I think, can be a little bit overrated. So everyone's saying, GPL, do I have the source code? Can I modify it? Well, frankly, source code, object code, what's the difference? Um, they're both formal descriptions of a program that is being executed by a computer, whether it be by a virtual machine, a compiler. Frankly, usually you want the pseudocode that's running in the programmer's brain that he ran through you know, his mental compiler to generate the source code. So a while ago, I got into an argument on the .NET beta mailing list about, um, you know, whether, about this, in essence, this fact. And my result was I wrote Anacrino, which is the first .NET decompiler. Um, everyone is like, oh, we won't have one of these for forever. And it's like, oh yeah, if you're the weekend. Um, but uh, nowadays, I spend most of my time working in objective assembler, is what I would call it. So move register 3 to register 0, and then append a string to it. Because we really are operating at incredibly high-level regimes with all of the debugging symbols that we have nowadays, in addition to working in languages like Objective-C and Java. So what the can we do with this? Um, well, we got everything from VNC servers um, that are using the mobile frame buffer that's inside the graphics subsystem. We've got um, uh, modifications to the address book that add pictures next to people's names, better versions of multitasking, better versions of folders that even Apple has provided today. In essence, we're just enhancing the experience of how people can use their devices. And this is the same kind of thing that you could do in the same kind of environment. Um, so people say, like, oh yeah, no one's really doing this right, I mean like three people. Um, well no, 8.5%, a number from Pinch Analytics, they are an ad company who has a um, uh, framework in tens of thousands of app store apps. They've determined that 8.5% of people with an iPhone jailbreak it and are interested in this kind of alternative experience. Um, and people are buying things in our store. So just from my store, um, another store that I've been working with recently, and some um, of, of the like, major third-party developers that are not in the store. We're talking about a $5 million market of people who are willing to void their warranty, follow complicated instructions, um, and uh, that change every three months because of Apple in order to get access to you know, different colored icons. 
So we're the only students. I want to see this everywhere. And that's something that I've been working on a lot recently, is trying to get this onto as many different places as I can, and to try to get as many people involved in this as I can. And I want you to think that, you know, that you, want to, like, you want to change the way people experience Twitter. Well, don't write a Twitter app. Modify their Twitter app. You'll actually get a larger market if you do that, because people are using that app already. And I'm here all weekend, and I'm doing various talks, and like, like, you know, they talk on Google you know, code modification. So. Thank you.